Hello, it's Yasso again. Uh, today I want to talk about records and how you can use them to build real-time applications. Uh, before I start, let me give you a very brief introduction into what records are. They're atomic pieces of JSON that can be manipulated and observed across thousands of simultaneous clients. So what that means is if one client has an object and they can read the state of it, and if they ever decide to manipulate it, all the other clients that share or reference the same object will get told of the changes in real time, which is usually less than 16 milliseconds. Okay, so what I want to do today is pretty much build a very basic retrospective board. Uh, we're going to concentrate on a single one of these post-its, and the idea behind it is going to say we can create a post-it, uh, fill its content, move it around the screen, and we can see that occur inside of all the different connected clients. So let's start. So the first thing we want to do is, uh, well, let's just take a look at the scaffold first. Uh, what we're doing here is we're pretty much connecting to DeepStream uh, via DeepStream Hub, and then to which the hosted DeepStream in the cloud. And then we're logging into it with open credentials, which means we're an anonymous user. And if we refresh this here, you should see that login is true, which means we have logged in successfully. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is get an actual record. So in this case, we'll say post it is equal to client.record.getRecord. And we have to provide it a unique name. In this case, I'll say post it A. And we'll say when the post it is loaded, we want to print out its content. Okay, so what this means, okay, so what, what we expect here right now is this, uh, this record never actually existed before, and because of that, uh, it's going to create it, and it's going to create it with an empty JSON object, and that's what we expect. And the next thing that's worth noting is the when ready. So what when ready means is we're going to wait for the data to actually come back from the server uh, before we start doing anything. So this guarantees that we actually got the, date, the remote state correctly. Okay, and now let's look at some of the APIs that we can use. So how can you actually set data? It's as simple as just saying set and passing it a JSON object. So in this case, I'll say type is glad and content is my first post-it. Right, and if we refresh the first time, uh, it's empty, the second time it actually set it. And that's just because we're doing a console.log beforehand. But now, what you'll notice is, if we comment that out, and whenever we refresh, we're now getting the actual state. So this is now on the server, which is great. So the other way you can also set data is using JSON paths. So you could say post-it.set, and you could pass in a JSON path. So in this case, we only want to target the actual type. And we're going to set that to mad. And again, if we refresh that, you'll notice it's been set. Now, we also want to be able to get data on demand. And you could do so simply by saying postit.get. And if you don't pass in anything, it would return the entire object. which is pretty much what we just wrote on top. Just realized, so let me just get rid of that. And then you can also, so there we go. Right, All right, my bad. Okay, and then you could also print out specific paths as well. So let's say we only want to get a certain path. You can again use the JSON path. So in this case, we're just going to say, get me the type. And it would just return that. Perfect. OK, so the next thing that we'd actually want to do is subscribe to the actual record. So it can tell you whenever anything actually changes. So in that case, it's as simple as saying post it dot subscribe. Again, exactly the same as the rest of the APIs. If you don't pass in the path, it would print out everything. So the entire state of the record. And if you do provide the path, 
it will only tell you when that actual path changes and the content within that path changes. So in this case, we're going to want to subscribe to the type. Awesome. OK. And what I'm going to do here as well is just rather than refreshing the window all the time, I'm just going to actually put the record on the, on the window object so I could start manipulating it directly from the console. Cool. So now if I say post it dot set and I pass it a completely new object. So in this case, I would say type is glad and content is hello. What you'll notice here is it gave you the entire object itself, which is uh, due to this subscribe here. And it also just told you the type that changed because of this thing here. So if I was to actually change the um, just the content, and as to say goodbye, what should happen is it will only print out the entire object because something changed, but it won't print out this because of the fact that the type has actually remained consistent between the two. So that, that's the majority of the APIs that we have, but there are a few small things that's good to know. You can also, when you're done with using a record, you should do postit.discard. What this means is you no longer need to use it, and DeepStream no longer has to care about sending you updates. You have uh, a couple of other things as well where you can do postit.delete. This means that you don't actually want the data anymore at all in the system, and because of that, it will delete it from the database. So the next time someone asks for it, that record won't exist. And finally, you also have two more things which is on the record handler itself. And those are, you can get the data of a record by saying client.record.snapshot. Uh, pass it the record name. In this case, it would be post it to A. And then a function callback. And you could, it would return an error and data. And that should ideally print out the actual snapshot here, which is great. So what snapshot means is you just want to get the data once. You don't actually want to subscribe to it. You don't care about real-time changes. You just want to say, get me the data so I can do something, and then immediately discard it. And snapshots are a much more efficient way of doing that because you don't actually have to subscribe to changes, which reduces the load in your system significantly. And then Finally, you also have something else, which is has, which means, does this record actually exist uh, on, my on, on the system itself? Uh, so that's going to look like this, and that's going to be uh, has. And let's print that out quickly. So here, has. OK. And what that should do here is typo, 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 yep. <coughs> OK. Perfect. So here you can see has is equal to true because of the fact that the record actually does exist. And if I was to say post it B, then this should now fail. Right? And what that pretty much means is that it can tell you whether or not something exists remotely without you actually having to get the data itself. So this summarizes all of the basic APIs that you have inside of records. And using a combination of these things, you can get some really powerful aspects out. So you can get applications such as the post-it boards. And we've also seen applications that you can build, like trading applications and such as well. So it really can like, uh, implement quite a large variety of things. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much.